Welcome to Cinema Savants, your home for all your movie and TV news, with Todd Vandenberg, Lee Val, and Rob Steele. And coming up this week, you know what, we're going to have a salute to our veterans, because it's Veterans Day. That's that's what we're supposed to be doing, as I understand it. Um, it is Veterans Day. It is. It's, it's a good day. I still got to go to work, but, you know, it's, it's a good day. And we've also got some other stuff that... Uh, is not as good. Like AMC, who has taken over from Movie Pass as having the be all end all credit card to go watch movies, did some weird things with their pricing this week that raises a lot of questions in my mind. Um, they're changing their prices. They're changing their prices. And you know what? That, that that's fine. I understand they want to ma- you know make money at this because that's their job. Um, <clears throat> but it's not going to be consistent across all the states. Which is uh, interesting. Uh, California, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York will go from nineteen ninety five a month to twenty three ninety five. Mm-hmm. And in Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Maryland, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Washington State, and the DC, both versions, go up to twenty one ninety five. Everyone else gets nineteen ninety five. My main question is what happens if you live on like the border of Georgia and South Carolina, who is not on this list, and you like going to that theater that's just over the border. Then <clears throat> do you yeah. have to pay that extra money? Yeah, I would I would assume that it would be based on the theater as opposed to where you live, because that would be nonsensical to base it on where you live. But what if you go to both? Then you only want to cross the what if you travel a lot? You know, all this you know Right. This week I'm in New York, next week I'm in uh, Georgia, and I live in Iowa. It's an excellent question because it does have to be tied to where you live because, you know, or the way I see it, they could do one of two things. They could either tie it to where you live or they could tie it to, you know, the most frequent theater that you go to. You know, for people, like you said, that if you live across the border, probably they're just going to tie it to where you live, in which case you're screwed. Yeah. But, but a couple things about this. For one thing, this is nothing close to what MoviePass would do because AMC is announcing this months before the price increases because they don't actually take into effect until next year. Holy crap. So, you know, they gave people two months notice, not, oh, I don't know, two seconds notice, which is the kind of crap MoviePass would and continues to do. So screw you, MoviePass, you're a horrible company. Now that you're a spinoff from Helios and... (coughs) Garbage Masters, whatever the name of that company is. God, I hate them. Anyway, <laughs> um, so two months notice, that's how real companies do it. Movie Pass, they let their customers know what they're going to do. In advance, what a concept. Yeah, what a concept. And the fact that not many companies actually do this, give you two months notice of a price increase. Um, I, I get the fact that it's tied to where you live because those states tend to have the highest ticket prices. This way, if you live in a state which has somewhat normal ticket prices, you're not subsidizing the people in New York or Los Angeles who normally have to pay fifteen dollars if they're lucky to go yeah. to go see a movie on a matinee, right? Yeah. So they're actually tying the price of the service to the theaters that you go to. If a ticket costs more in California, why should the guy in Ohio? or North Dakota or whatever, or the gal, why should she have to help subsidize your higher prices? This makes perfect sense to me. So two things I like about it. Yeah, there's definitely a, a, a glitch in the system, like like you mentioned, but it's to gonna me... Be, there's going to be. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's going to be. But to me, the, the, the fact that they're raising prices, uh, and again, it's a few dollars a month. It's not like, oh my God, we're they're doubling, doubling it, <clears throat> or, or we're cutting the service by... 90%, which is what MoviePass did, and less than that because then they took away most of the movies that you could see. So th- this is how real businesses do things. MoviePass, you idiot, moron, bastards. So I'm <laughs> fully su- how you really feel. I'm fully supporting this. I, I've got AMC. I've got the A-list pr- plan. I, it's not exactly going to kill me to pay two extra dollars a month especially since they're giving me plenty of time to decide, do I really want to do this? Because I could go to, what is the name of the other rival service? Uh, Cinemia, or however you pronounce it, S-I-N-E-M-I-A. Uh, they're, they're actually dropping prices on a few of their plans. 
they're going down to, gosh, I believe it's $4. Yeah, $4 a month if you only go from Monday through Thursday. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, that gives you that Good. gives you one ticket per month. But, hey, that's still one ticket a month, and it's going to cost you $4 to go see the movie. Here's the problem, though. It really doesn't cost you $4 a movie because they also charge a processing fee when you buy your ticket, $1.80 a ticket, which is still okay if you're paying that three ninety nine dollars fee. But let's say you're paying the eight ninety nine dollars per month fee, which is three tickets. Ah, but if you actually go, at a dollar eighty, at a dollar eighty, at a dollar eighty. So cinema is, and that that's kind of like hidden away in their plan. By the way, they have let's see, one, two, three, four, five different plans right now, so which is kind of insane. Um, oh, oh no, wait, they also have uh, a family plan, blah blah blah. So cinema is just way too complicated. Plus, the thing that really bothers me is that dollar eighty processing fee, because no, you're. Your plan is not three ninety nine a month or eight ninety nine a month. It's three ninety nine a month. Oh, plus we're going to soak you for about two bucks for every movie you actually do go see. Is it still a good deal? Yes, but and yet and it yet it is because who knows when they're going to bump it? Oh, now it's two fifty. Oh, and then for these first two weeks, it's going to be. It's like no. I mean, they're headed down the path of my friend's movie pass. So yeah, it, not it really great. Like my- the, the people who run my, my city actually do that with the water bill. <laughs> I'd water like to bills. be making that up. I mean, you, 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 you got to pay awful. your water bill. And if you want to use your credit card, like most people do, or, you know, ATM card, whatever you want to call it, they add a dollar and you go, why? Or if you want, or they, they only accept credit cards, which adds a dollar uh, money orders, which cost you money to get. You mm-hmm. can write them a check. I didn't know checks still existed. I haven't seen one <laughs> since I filled the last one out in 1997, and they do not take cash. Who, who came up with that? It's, it's weird. So we started a petition to go knock it off, and it's going to work just about as well as the one Guillermo del Toro started this week. <laughs> yeah. To, uh, to save Filmstruck, <clears throat> which so far it's accumulated just over 32,000 signatures. Um I, mean, I actually think that's to 45,000 now. Is it up to 45? 32 was the last one I found. Yeah. But, which, which is great that there's 45,000 petitions. I haven't... Signatures. Signed, that's I, a lot of petitions. Yeah, there would be a lot of petitions, signatures. I haven't signed the petition because, I mean, I really wish Filmstruck would stay. My thought process on this is, I mean, a lot of big name hitters like Guillermo del Toro, Barbara Streisand was one who just came out, you know, saying, say Filmstruck. Like, there are and a lot of... And Bill Hader. And Bill well, Hader, sure that is. huge, huge proponent of this. These are people who could f- save Filmstruck themselves. Why don't you guys buy Filmstruck? You're such f- huge fans of Filmstruck. I am too. I get the point. But they're saying, it's like, do something about it. It's like, yeah, do something about it, millionaires, people who have who are worth $100 million. I, you guys could get together and buy Filmstruck and keep it alive, you know, God, this really burns me. I, 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 I get the whole point of social activism. I'm very much a proponent of that. It's great that, oh, people should get together and rally and do something. It's like you guys actually have the power. You literally, you literally could do this. And yet your big thing is, oh, do something about this. Sign a petition. It's like, what's the petition going to do? Is it, Do you think you guys really think it's going to – change Warner Brothers mind and say, oh, look, there's 45,000 people. Let's not shudder it after all. You think 45,000 people is going to save Filmstruck? Are you crazy? No. I, I, I think I think that the millionaires who are saying, oh, this is this is terrible. You guys could do something about it. And yet you say, oh, let's get dudes. If there was enough public backing of Filmstruck, they wouldn't be shuddering it to begin with. And that's probably why they're not putting their money behind their love of Filmstruck, because they know it would cost them money. Otherwise, they would do it. I, I love Filmstruck. It's a great concept. But again, I didn't pay the extra $9 a month because their streaming is so fragmented as it is. You know, you've got the, the, the boutique streaming thing. It's like, at, at, you know, at this point, I, I, offhand, I don't know how many streaming services there are that are subscription-based. I'm guessing there are, there are probably, I don't know, 20, 30. 3, I, I, you know, I can't exactly come up with that kind of money for every single thing. So I no. made an economic decision. You millionaires who are saying, oh, my God, do something. Yeah, do something. Buy Filmstruck. Keep it going. You love it so damn much. 
I was like, I, that just really, really pisses me off instead of one of them coming up and saying, you know what? Instead of buying another villa in France this week, I think I'll get together with some friends and I'll say, hey, you know what? I'm going to chip in $5 million towards buying Filmstruck. Who's with me? Haven't seen any of that. No. So it's kind of like, there, yeah, screw your petition. There are you know? more. I mean, what, 45,000 people. There are more people that have 4K TVs. Yeah, there are. That's my segue. I know. I get and it. And I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Fandango released a list this week of a, of a survey they did of over 1,500 film fans <clears throat> to say, hey, what do you think is the best 4K HD movie that has come out so far? And we were talking about this pre-pro. See, three weeks in a row I got to say that. Um, and a lot of the movies are the the up the, the the sci-fi movies the action movies because they look pretty they're mm-hmm. supposed to look pretty they spent money on special effects uh, like I meant, you know pretty woman did not spend money on lasers anywhere in that movie so yeah it's not going to make the list because it wasn't a special effects movie special effects look gorgeous in 4K yep. which is why the you know the top 3 on the list Thor Ragnarok Avengers Infinity War and The Dark Knight all of them are gorgeous on a 4K TV. That makes sense. It does. <clears throat> Except for one movie on this list that I'm yeah. wondering how it got on the list. And no, it's not Pretty Woman. <laughs> um, and I sent this to Todd. You, you said you didn't notice this. I did not notice this. But as we soon did. as you mentioned, I did notice something that wasn't on the list, which I thought was really surprising. So, Okay, well, what, was, what was yours? Mine, I noticed that the original Star Wars trilogy, nowhere on there. And yes, it is out in 4K. Oh, is it? Okay. It is. I was going to say, maybe it's not out. Well, I, I thought that was the only possible reason, but it is. So, really odd. Now, maybe it came out after the survey, but... And yet, eh, that can't be it. the problem. Because if you look at the list, number eight on the list is Mission Impossible Fallout. Mission Impossible Fallout doesn't start streaming until tomorrow... The DVD, (laughs) Blu-ray, and 4K doesn't come out until December 4th. That's awesome. How the hell did it get on this list? That's interesting. Um, Because I saw that, I said, that's on my list of things to get when it comes out on DVD. So I've got got a list of of movies with the date so I can remember because I forget things. That's that's good eye-brain coordination, Rob. Thank you. Saw that and went, hang on a minute. That's not supposed to be out yet. And I was right. It isn't. That's really funny, in a, in a strange way. Because yeah, how exactly? How how did you get to be number eight on a list of all time things when you don't even exist yet? Yeah, it's and again, like like you said, this is not a list of the best movies. I mean, no one said these movies are any good at all. It's just that they fit the format best. They do. Now, most of these are really really good movies, and they do definitely fit the format. But it's kind of weird that they that a a movie that's not available in the format at all. Not just made the list, made it so high on the list. Yeah, that's that's a little odd. Uh, makes me think that they just had people write in numbers, or perhaps they included it on the list mistakenly because they know eventually. But they you meant know. Ghost Protocol. Yeah, maybe they did. Yes, I, I don't know. That's really odd. Oops. Yeah, that is some big oops. Oh, here's a list. And by the way, this movie's not even available, but it's number eight. Hmm. Speaking of other things that aren't even out yet, Disney has announced the name of their streaming service. It's called Disney Plus because that's snazzy. Yeah, isn't yes. that a terrible name? I mean, yeah. no, it's not, I, let me re, let me walk that back, as the politicians love to say, as opposed to wow, I shouldn't have said that. It's not a terrible name, but wow, it's just generic. Or could it have been better? Yeah, exactly. Disney. I mean, you you guys only have. Good Lord, 80 odd years of history and things to draw from. And you came up with Disney Plus because that's all you could think of for your ESPN streaming thing. ESPN Plus. ABC Plus. How boring. is a thing. How, how, because of course Disney owns all of them. Uh, that's just yeah. so, so like you said, it's boring. Disney Plus. It's like, eh, okay. I mean, that and sounds like, I, uh, that sounds like I get to skip the line, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that sucks actually i may be skipping this service altogether um because there's just too damn many of them mm-hmm. they announced two new series that are going to be released with this one is going to be a loki series starring tom hiddleston 
that I am interested in. Totally. Uh, the other one is a Rogue One, Star Wars Rogue One prequel starring Diego Luna's character Cassian Andor. Cassian Andor. I'll be honest, I had forgotten the name of his character because when I went to see Rogue <laughs> One, which was a good movie, a good I knew movie. everyone was going to be dead by the end of it. Why should I bother remembering the names? Very true. Um, and it, I want to see if this, this works with you, too. If we're going to get a prequel to Rogue One, I don't want – no offense to him because he did a good job. <laughs> uh, Diego Luna did a good job, I think. He was, he was very good. However, if we're going to get a prequel, I want to get the walking arsenal guy and the blind guy with the stick, the force is one, I am one with the force or whatever. I, I am on uh, with you 100% on that. Those were That's by who far I want. the most interesting characters. And throw in the goofy, the, the tall, goofy droid, K, whatever, because um, he was fun. By far, those were the most interesting characters. Easily. And and I'm sure they can get Donnie in. Uh you know, as far as I'm not, I'm not saying he's not a big star, but they could afford to pay him to, to have. I mean, if they can afford Tom Hiddleston. I know they can afford Donnie Yen. And I apologize. I don't know the name of the actor of the walking arsenal guy off the top of my head. And I'm too lazy to look it up. So there, I would much rather see that series. That series would push the balance for me to go ahead and subscribe to Disney. Please change the name from plus. Uh, that would be so cool. <laughs> Those characters are so interesting. And the actors did such a great job. Uh, it was such a weird, cool relationship and, you know, watching their adventures. and uh, Wen you, Yang. Yeah, you could see four or five episodes where they're just sitting at a campfire arguing about the Force. And that would be, in, depending on the script, of course, but they could make it interesting. Uh, total- um, I, I pulled up the names because I don't remember them. Uh, Wen Yang is the guy who played the Arsenal. <laughs> I, uh, Baze Malbus apparently, and uh, Donnie Yen played uh, Sharut Im, Im, Im Wei. I don't remember their names actually being said at any point during the movie, though. I th- it was always, you go over there and the you Ars- do this. I and, think the and, Arsenal yelled his name when Donnie Yen went out and kicked ass. And, and, but I mean, it, it's, it's a scene. name that you don't recognize oh, as no. a name, so you kind of go, huh? Why did he yell that? That's a weird. Oh, maybe that's dude's name. But I'm with you, and I don't remember the names of any of the characters. And I think part of it is because we knew going in, it's like, eh, don't have to remember these names because they get to be dead. Yeah. Uh, which was the, 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 the biggest drawback to, to Rogue One going into it. it and it, there's no real way around it when you're when you're doing this that story. Is like, eh, you know. And not not that you know they're going to die on screen or something. So spoiler alert for a movie that's like a hundred years old at this point in Star Wars time. But by the time of the action of the movies you're watching now, eh, this is a long time ago. To, to me, it's the best of the recent group that's come out of of the more recent universe. Not arguing that, but totally on board with that they should do a, a, a series on those characters that would totally kick butt uh unfortunately i am going to have to subscribe see this is why i didn't get film struck because i knew eventually i would have to cancel it because i was going to get the disney plus now what would be really cool and we'll get to this in a little bit so i'll just save it for that but there's something that would be really cool that could happen for disney plus which would make it even more attractive but the thing with tom hiddleston playing loki that has been out there for, I guess, what, about a month? But now it is official yeah. that Hiddleston is signed. So that's the difference. I mean, so it's, it's not the situation, oh, I read this about a month ago. Yeah, but now it's official. And apparently it is not the Loki Scarlet Witch series that was coming. That's Scarlet Witch may get her own series later, but it's not in this one. Right, and that's the difference because they're talking about that, oh, and then there's, there's going to do a Scarlet Witch series. That's not been officially announced, not that right. I've seen anywhere with Elizabeth Olsen, which... That could definitely be pretty cool, especially if it's Scarlet Witch and Vision. That would Hello. be very, very cool and would kind of surprise. Sense. Yeah, it would make a ton of sense. I'm surprised they haven't met, said that because, again, if you can afford Tom Hiddleston, you can probably afford Paul Bettany. So well, you got it for Star Wars movies. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can see how that's a, a different. They're going to have different budgets on this, but I'm sure they're going to be spending a ton of money. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Star Wars, I'm going to segue into a slightly alternate universe, which in and of itself segued into a slightly alternate universe to get this character back. (laughs) Um, Yes. I'm I'm fairly annoyed by the article I found that said this, though, Um, because they announced that 
Star Trek Discovery is getting a spinoff of uh, Michelle Yeoh's character, Philippa Giorgio. I don't remember how to pronounce the character's name. It's an Italian shoe. It could be. F7. That's uh, There we go. <laughs> anyway, they, they announced it as Crazy Rich Asians star Michelle Yeoh. And I thought, really? I saw it's that. I fun. saw that. A like, million other things that she's been in. You picked. Well, I'm not knocking that movie. I haven't seen it. But it's anyway. it's it's the flavor of the month. So that's why they went with that. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I would not describe Michelle Yeoh as Crazy Rich Asians star. I mean, there hmm. there's so many other things. I mean, the first thing that pops up in my mind is Crouching Tiger, Crouching Hidden Tiger, Dragon. Dragon. Um, but, yeah, she's been a film star for decades at this point. She doesn't look at it. But this almost makes me want to go back and renew my CBS All Access subscription. See, another reason why I couldn't afford Filmstruck, because I was mm-hmm. paying, paying for that, because I wanted to see the Star, the Star Wars the Trek sorry, show. This is, this is awesome, because Michelle Yeoh totally kicks ass. She is excellent, so... Really think this is fantastic, but again, man, there's another five six bucks every single month. It's like, please, please stop this crap, uh, <laughs> man alive. It's 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 getting kind of crazy. It is, and the, the crazy thing is, there's so much good stuff that makes it worth because not, you have to get CBS All Access. Oh, and by the way, oh, what about DC? You know, the DC Universe, I'm, I'm losing my mind over exactly what they yeah. call it in streaming services. You know, that's worth getting. And, gee, I wish I'd spent the money for Filmstruck and, you know, on and on and on. So, uh, you so, know, I have to get a second job just so I can watch TV. Speaking of the DC Universe, with the Nightwing movie making no progress, the director for that film, Chris McKay, has decided to move on and do something else for Warner Brothers. And I kind of like this idea. Because I remember the original series of this, which was awesome. Uh, he's going to be making a live-action Johnny Quest series. That is awesome news. As, as long as it's the original one. Exactly. That came out in 1966, in I think. Um, it's it's got to be the original one. The, the new adventures of Johnny Quest were... No. No, not so much. The original was awesome. And it's got to be, I mean, exactly, exactly that format, which... And I would assume most people listening to the show have seen Vent the Venture Brothers, which is a excellent <laughs> sardonic take on the original Johnny Quest. But you've you've got to have Haji. You've, you've got to include and race. I, yeah, of course. You gotta and include, race has got to be just as race as uh, he's got to be as, as violent and sexist and misogynistic. I mean, I don't what, know. He has to be misogynistic. But well, yeah. It, it, he I killed had, people in the he, 1966 yeah. cartoon for kids. Yes, he did. And he was a little misogynistic, he but I mean, it wasn't well. wasn't wasn't overboard. I mean, at fifth times, it wasn't like he was right, going around was, raping. He was only killing. Uh, but he was definitely a ladies' man, which was a weird thing in a kids' show. Uh, race killing people was a Jade, weird thing. His Jade, girlfriend that would pop his girlfriend up Jade, which was had to be based on on the Batman Catwoman thing. Yeah. Because well, did they have that back in the? You know, I was just thinking. I was as soon as I said that, I thought, let's flip that. I think the bat, the the, 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 the Catwoman thing was almost based on this. Might have been, but I mean, that was part of what made the show interesting, even to us as kids. Is like this is really weird because she's kind of the bad. She was she was kind of a bad person. She had an antihero in a kids show in the '60s. It was really unusual, and and, and I'm going to be misogynistic for a minute. Played by a woman, a female. Uh, that's not misogynistic. That's standing up for the, the fact that they thought, okay, well, oh, let's make this a female character. I, I, it was a I strong was thinking that way, character. but someone's going to go, no, you're being misogynistic. No, I mean, that's a like, strong, that was a strong female character. And she wasn't just, oh, she's the villain, blah, blah, blah. She was a really interesting, complicated character, which is really weird for a kid's show at any point, but especially in the 60s. Uh, the, the animation different style from what we think of as like great animation but it absolutely worked well it was done for that show uh, same style as the original scooby-doos because it was made by the same people and bizarrely shared a lot of the same soundtrack <laughs> but I it mean, was you, you laugh but I, I i went through and watched johnny quest with no it just with makes my me kids, laugh because and then of, we yeah. watched some scooby-doo episodes and we kind of went hang on a minute i heard this about half an hour ago in a different show. Yeah, Johnny Quest actually had some some, some scary 
episodes, uh, and of course the animation and all the rest. Animation doesn't matter because this is going to be live action, but going back around to your original point, yeah, it has to be based exactly on the 60s version, the original version of Johnny Quest. That's awesome news. I mean, frankly, I would much rather see a live action version of Johnny Quest done the right way than Nightwing. And Nightwing is a cool character, but I mean, DC is just jumping around and they're doing random characters with no rhyme or reason. So this would be really, really cool. This is very, very nice news. When it, when it winds up on a boutique streaming service, I'll subscribe for the month so I can watch it. There you go. And actually, if you need your Nightwing fix, <clears throat> I read something on uh, the Titan series yesterday that Dick Grayson will be Nightwing by the end of the series. But here's the there. question. By the end of the series or by the end of the, the oh, sorry, first season? By the end of the season. By the end oh, okay. of the season. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm thinking well, British because they go, ooh, series well, for right. them are seasons for yeah. us, which we kind of, which bumped me out the first time I heard Jeremy Clarkson go, and that's the end of the series. I'm like, but I just got into Top Gear. <laughs> anyway, moving on to Jeremy Irons because he's also British. There you How go. horrible a segue. Anyway, they finally revealed what role he'll be playing in the forthcoming Watchmen TV series on HBO, and it's not who I was expecting. Um, and I, actually, I'm going to throw this quickly into Gene Smart was added to the cast as like FBI agent number six or something. Really? Um, That's she is. One of the last people I would have expected in something like this. But, you know, that's cool. I, I like Jean Smart. I think she's very she's good. Good actress. Um, Jeremy Irons is going to be playing an older version of Adrian Veet, sometimes known as Osmandius. I can totally see that. It was. Um, here's my question. Wasn't yes. Watchmen going to have the, the HBO series going to have all new characters? Is it going to be in the universe, but it wasn't going to follow the original characters? I think. If I understand correctly, Osmandius would be the only one still around because it. Uh, I'm just the, surprised. The original he's... series took place in the 80s, and now this series is supposed to be taking place now with somehow Nixon still being president. I don't. <laughs> Nixon Nixon's head in a jar as the president. That, like, that's that would be fun of them. That would be fun if they did that. I'm just surprised. I mean, I th- it's an interesting character, and Jeremy Irons. I, I don't is think he's like, going to be regular. Perfect for that. And I can yeah. I can see that. I can see that he pops up occasionally or something as, as the guy pulling all the strings. But if he's in this the series, it's kind of – it makes me more interested in the series finally because, oh, there's actually a touchstone to the story as opposed to, oh, it's in the Watchmen universe. But we talked about this months ago. It was like, oh, but we're going to do a Watchmen series but with none of the Watchmen in it. It was like, hmm, yeah, I totally think that's stupid. So that's good news, especially with Jeremy Irons. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, because it's like he's kind of like born to play that role. So uh, it fits. He rolls out of bed and he, he does the bit and then he goes back to bed and because I'm pretty sure he can do brilliant and haughty because that's the character. Absolutely. That's cool news. Let's see. Other. we got a lot of superhero news toward the end of the show. Uh, the CW and it, it's not regular straight line Batman, Superman, superhero news, although that's coming. <laughs> the CW is planning to reboot a show called The 4400. I don't know if you ever watched. Did you ever see that? I never, came out I've never watched The 4400, but yeah. Ten from, years ago. It's a good show. Um, yeah, it, I watched it for all like ten episodes that existed. <laughs> um, talks about it, it, the series is about 4400 people who at various points in time disappear, believe that they're, you know, they think, oh, abducted by aliens or something. And then they all reappear in the original series, they reappear in one place with no memory of what happened between the time they disappeared and now. But they all have, you know, extra abilities. Uh, the One of the changes I said they're doing in this reboot is that they're all going to reappear in the same place where they disappeared, which I think would suck if the place that they disappeared from doesn't exist anymore. It's a hole in the ground or something. And well, that would suck. They show up in an interior wall in a Walmart disappeared from the top floor of the World Trade Center and then reappears there and, oh, whoops, sorry. I'm that just be, trying to think of buildings that aren't there anymore. I didn't would, mean to yeah, yeah. offend anyone with that. Um, Offender. That's me. <laughs> I'm not with the Avengers or the Defenders. I'm the Offenders. That's, Why isn't that's that a series? Job. That'll be a series on Disney+. Plus. The Offenders. Could be. Starring Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> why not? Anyway, uh, the original series was good. I'm not real sure how they're going to be redoing this, and 
I would like it if they just continued the series from where it left off because they kind of did one of those cliffhanger and kill the series. And you go, hey, but I was watching that come back. Another one of those things. Anyway. Twould be good. Uh, something else that's coming soon, and this is where we get to the Superman bit. The death of Superman animated series. It wasn't an animated series. The animated movie that came out recently and its sequel, Reign of the Supermen, all based on the... It was the 90s, wasn't it, when they did the series? Mm, the comics? I believe you're correct, sir. Early 90s. I've got them in a box upstairs. Just go with me on this. They're going to be hitting the theaters as a special double feature in January, which I think is kind of interesting. Although it's... I'm trying to figure out if it's going... Because it's going to be over two days on Jan, let's see January 13th and January 14th, which are a Sunday and a Monday instead of a Saturday and Sunday. Hello. You'd get more people that way, I'd think. That anyway, I'm wondering if odd. one is on a Sunday and one is on a Monday, or are they both showing them together? Oh, I would hope they're showing them together because they're not that long, no, as I recall. Well, I, you know, take the same amount of time as, what, a Lord of the Ring movie. I shouldn't say they're not that long because the reign of the Superman hasn't even come out yet. So, uh, But... The first one wasn't that long, so I'm assuming it would be a double feature because that would be the way to do it anyway. It would uh, make sense. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, good idea. And uh, speaking of Superman, Veterans Day is today. So we were thinking about, you know, what are some good Veterans Day movies? That's and a, that's a smart segue, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, see? I master. can do those occasionally. <laughs> um, Veterans Day. See, uh, when I looked up Veterans Day movies, I came up with a lot of documentaries. And Which works. I don't know that that's a good idea because I have, you know, there's a, a lot of soldiers who go through all the crap they go through in wars, mm-hmm. come back with PTSD or shell right. shock or whatever you want to call it. Do they want to watch a movie that was about what they just got over? I can't see that happening. So, you know, good Veteran Day movie, The Smurfs, you know. <laughs> Something with absolutely no military in it at all. Um, I'm thinking that might work for some people. Although, uh, if you want like, you know, people. Yes. good military movies, I, I, I am going to give this out as a warning. Because whenever military movies come up, I always give this as a warning. Uh, Born on the Fourth of July, mm-hmm. which was a, it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Not knocking the movie, but it is not a date movie. <laughs> no. I, I, I found that out the, the, the hard way. Did you? I, I'm saving everyone... Saving everyone some trouble. Do not do this as a Netflix and chill. Hey, it's the 4th of July. We'll watch Born on the 4th of July. Oh, was this a bad idea for a date movie? And, and some people probably would do that, not knowing the movie. You're right. Exactly. Public service. Thank Public you service. so much. That, that My work here is done. I'll let you do the Veterans Day movies. <laughs> Veterans Day movies. I have three movies on the list. I, I mentioned a couple of them on my own account on uh, Facebook last night because I actually just watched two of these movies and I try to watch one of them I watched like every Veterans Day weekend kind of thing which means yes I have seen this movie a lot of times Um, and I'll save that for the last one Uh, the first one I'm going to mention not a date movie Uh, that would be The Deer Hunter what in 1978 I believe Uh, one of Robert De Niro's first big roles also the first big role for Meryl Streep Deer Hunter is a fabulous movie, and again, it's about about veterans. Hey, I was right. Veterans coming back, in this case, from the Vietnam War, and it also deals with what happened uh, with these soldiers, these three buddies from the the coal area of Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania, and they go off to the Vietnam War, and they don't come back the same way that they left it. Let's put it that way. Uh, And that's what it's about. It's about the veterans and, and the the PTSD and readjusting to what happened and what they went through. God, it, it's just a fantastic movie. Uh, everybody, imagine De Niro and Streep, and by the way, Christopher Walken, Christopher Walken. being great in a movie. Who, who would ever think that would happen, right? Oh, who knows? Uh, again, this is 1978. This is before people realized who these people were, more or less, although they knew De Niro because he was in Taxi Driver in 76, but still, God, what a great movie. Um, great movie, period, not just the Veterans Day theme, but fantastic movie if you haven't seen deer hunter please watch the deer hunter um do you want to go back to you or you want me to just do my no keep keep going okay so i I mentioned my one yeah the next one (laughs) the next one saving private ryan um yes again not a date movie but again 
an absolutely fantastic movie, not just for Veterans Day. And this one is not so much about veterans coming back, although that's a framing sequence, which is really powerful. Um, Steven Spielberg, of course, saving Private Ryan. Um, the director, not that he was the guy who saved Private. Uh, but it's about the sacrifice and the thing that soldiers go through. And, of course, veterans used to be soldiers or sailors, airmen, whatever. But it's it's that theme of, of brotherhood and that is pushed. I shouldn't say pushed. That's just a, a theme throughout throughout the movie Saving Private Ryan. Tom Hanks is turns in his usual, you know, gee, why weren't you the, the best actor for this time around, Tom? Because basically he could just win it almost every time. Uh, fantastic cast. Ed Burns, um, of course, Tom Hanks. Tom Sizemore is fantastic in, in, in this movie. Uh, a a little-known guy by the name of Matt Damon is Private Ryan, but there are so many scenes in this movie that are just choke you up. There's a scene with uh, I can't think of the actor's name, but he plays uh, General Marshall, and he's they give him, they give him the news. The premise is they just find out the War Department finds out back when there's a, a War Department as opposed to Department of Defense finds out that three brothers have all been killed in action, and Mom is going to get the letters. And they find out there's a fourth brother still alive, and General Marshall says we have to go get this guy. So that's what it's about. But he reads a quote. He quotes a letter that Abraham Lincoln sent to to a, a military mom. And it, it's just beautiful. So, and there's so many m- moments like that in this movie. Just absolutely touching. Great movie. And my number one movie for Veterans Day is The Best Years of Our Lives. I've talked about it before. And this is actually a date movie. Haha. Uh, there are no war scenes in this movie, which is different from the other two. So that's probably the biggest reason is it's it's a date movie um then it's about the impact of the war on three veterans coming back this came out in 1946 so it's a little old but it is far from dated it's it's beautiful talking about movies that would look great on 4k the best years of our lives beautiful it's filmed in black and white that was a choice it wasn't because they couldn't do color back then um the director of photography is Greg Toland. The guy who was the director of photography for Citizen Kane has some of the same effects in it with the deep focus. Uh, the way this movie is staged is just fantastic. There are scenes where the important thing is happening and way off in the background because you don't really need to hear the dialogue because you know what the dialogue is going to be. And then you hear basically the dialogue of that conversation is rehashed later in the film and it has more impact for that actor to give her version of the events later. Um, three veterans come back. One is wealthy. One was a captain in the Army Air Corps, and now he has to come back to a dead-end job. And the third is a sailor who had his hands literally blown off in the war. And, and it's about him adjusting and afraid of how his family is going to adjust. And famously, Harold Russell is the actor who played that, and he really did lose his hands in the in the war not the way it was described in the movie but he really did lose his hands in the war and the, he was awarded a special honorary oscar for this and also happened to win best supporting actor along with all the other actors and this is the first movie the guy ever made and he is fantastic this god it's just a beautiful movie one of the best movies ever made period um so those are the yeah. three for veterans day and man those were all powerful powerful movies excellent stuff for any kind, but especially for Veterans Day. Mind if I end on something that's... Please. I know that movie get, gets to you a bit sometimes. Every time. <laughs> uh, yeah, can I end on something... I'm going to call it slightly more upbeat. Is that okay? It's oh, oh a, thousand veterans times, related. a thousand times more upbeat. Uh, we, can end okay. on, we can end on Pinky in the Brain for all I care. Okay, so uh, <gasps> almost, Pinky. and yet not quite. I don't know why Pinky in um, the Brain popped in my head. That's terrifying. Yes. It, it, uh, it, it goes along with veterans, I think, because... A lot of people, when they think of veterans right now, some people think of Captain America. See? It's almost a segue. It is a segue. Anyway, Captain America, uh, uh, Steve Rogers, the character, is not supposed to make it through the next Avengers movie, which means Chris Evans is is supposed to not be coming back to play the role. Right. We're kind of expecting that at this point. But that doesn't mean we need to get rid of the character Captain America because other people have taken over the role. Many people, actually. uh, Steve Mackey's Falcon took over the role as Captain America. Uh, Sebastian Stan's Winter Soldier became Captain America for a while. And there's another guy who took the role, a character named U.S. Agent, which I thought was a 
horrible name. <laughs> it was a horrible name. Interesting character, though. But he could be introduced, and someone has popped up and said he'd really like to do it. And I think this guy fits. And when you first hear this name, you're going to go, oh, God, not him. Then you're going to think about it and go, you know what? That might work. The name is John Cena. <laughs> and I may throw that special effect in from all the bajillion memes that they've done. Um, I'm <laughs> kidding. I won't do that. We'll get sued. Um, what do you think of John Cena as Captain America? I mean, I, he's got the build and U.S. agent seemed to fit him, I think. Now, when I first read this story, I thought, no, uh, no, no. Absolutely no. Not that John Cena is not a good actor, because he has become a fairly good actor. He, he's not bad. He's not bad. And obviously the physique, he's got it. But, but he's I'm got not, the physique. I'm not that worried about the physique, because they, they can do the physique. The acting is what counts. But he could, he could pull it off. But I did not like him as Captain America, because I was thinking they're talking about rebooting and doing him as Steve Rogers. It's like, that's an absolute no. But, but as U.S. agent, who becomes, who takes over the role... I'm on, I'm on board with that. However, I would much rather, much, much rather see Anthony Mackie get the role. And, of course, there that's another thing that's going to be on Disney Plus is the adventures of how whatever they're going to they're call Winter it. Winter Soldier and Falcon. Yeah. Or, well, it sounds kind of like Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's intentional. Um, and, and maybe that series that's that series will be Falcon and Winter Soldier and they're going to an adventures and maybe at the end of the first season one of them will take the role of the captain and it better be the Falcon damn it but because Anthony Mackie is uh, Sebastian Sam is cool but Anthony Mackie is one of my favorite actors he needs to be Captain America that's the only reason that I don't want John Cena to play US agent and then turning into Captain America because he needs to be third behind Mackie and Stan um, but overall it's like if for him to do US agent Totally on board with that. Totally on board with that. I think it would be excellent. Taking playing Steve Rogers, that would be a hell no, because no. nobody needs to play Steve Rogers for at least mm, 10 years, unless it's Chris Evans. I'll agree. And if you agree with that or disagree with that, you can contact us through our website, because we have one, cinemasavants.com, which, uh, and we've got an email, too, cinemasavants, at coil.us, and C-O-Y-L. It's on the website. Go look at it. Uh, buttons for Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. And uh, in the meantime, while you're doing that, uh, you know what? Get out and go see a movie. Captain, we're losing power in the warp engines. I think we should be leaving now. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Uh, and on that unusually harmonious bombshell, it is time to end. I am very disappointed. Man, we have a weird job. It's shameful, but uh, eh, it's a living. And like that, he's gone. Hey, who turned out the lights?